Hey, AP Environmental Science students and teachers. Welcome back to the Writing Like a Scholar series. We're here today to cover topic two in this series, which is how to actually write an FRQ. And so before we get into it, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to the channel if you don't already. There's three more videos coming up in this series, and there'll also be a ton of exam review content coming second semester as we get closer to actually getting ready for the exam. Before we cover how you should write FRQs, we have to go over some really important don'ts. So these are things you should never do on an FRQ. You should never use flowery language or transitions. Uh, this is not something where you need to outline a thesis, where you need to use nice transitions. There's no points awarded for anything beyond correct answers. So we just need to get straight in and straight out. We should also not use persuasive or opinionated statements. You should never say, I believe, or I think, or I'm not sure never indicate hesitancy and never indicate sort of an opinionated piece. It is environmental science, not environmentalism. And so we really need to stick to objective scientific facts and ideas. And then never use vague terms. This is probably the Achilles heel of APE students uh, every single year on the exam. We use all of these terms that we hear in the media or that we hear in our everyday lives, things like bad for the environment, unhealthy, toxic, green, unnatural. And this just, means nothing in AP environmental science. Um, I hate to say it, but these will never earn you points. And so we just have to be really clear and concise and use APE's vocabulary. So what we'll do in the next slide is actually go over what you can replace these everyday common language terms with so that your FRQs are going to be solid and earn you points. So now we're on to the do's. These are the things that you should do when writing an FRQ. You always want to start with a brief prompt restate. Do not rewrite the entire prompt, but just phrase it so that you remember where you're starting off and you're signaling to your readers. You might say, one environmental benefit is, and then get into it. Um, you don't need to say one environmental benefit of humans preserving natural ecosystems for national parks is. It's just so much, you don't have the time to write all that. It's not necessary. You should also clearly separate answers when you're asked for two answers. So you can just simply say one economic consequence is, and then a second economic consequence is, or another consequence is. So you just want to be really clear. And this is because your reader is only going to consider your first two options if you're asked for two answers. And so you don't want to accidentally segue into another answer that's not correct. You don't want to be unclear whether or not you're providing two answers. Be very clear and signal to your reader, here is my first answer, here is my second answer, and then you're done. Another thing is to clearly separate individual sections of FRQs. A lot of times students will just write one block paragraph and that is really challenging as a reader to make sense of. Your reader will still score this. They're not going to ignore your answer, but it's so much easier for them and for you if you clearly signify here is letter A part one, here's letter A part two, so on and so forth. And then finally stick to those sentence limits. A lot of times students are tempted to provide extra details on an identify that they don't need or same thing on a describe. They'll go into three or four or five sentences or they'll start sort of, uh, you know, getting into environmentalism. They'll say, how can these greedy corporations pollute the air? And this is so bad. For, and, and those are fine ideas to have. And we hope that you, you know, get some environmentalism from this course as well. But it is never going to earn you points on an FRQ. So we need to be very clear that we don't get into sort of subjective, you know, moral judgments about environmentalism. We have to stick to environmental science on FRQs. So here is a really helpful final do on your FRQs. You should always be using APE's vocabulary. And this is the table that I mentioned earlier, where we can replace some of these common like eco kind of jargon or eco buzzwords with actual scientific terms. So instead of saying pollute or pollution or releases pollution, we always need to specify a pollutant. We can never just say pollution by itself in APES. So carbon dioxide, SOx, NOx, particulate matter. And then we should also specify where is that pollution going? And the key terms here are the atmosphere or soil or water. So we want to be specific. It's not enough to just say that an action pollutes. We always need to provide a pollutant. And that kind of segues into the chemicals points. That's probably the second most common mistakes APE students make is just say it releases harmful chemicals or it puts bad chemicals in the air. The word chemical will never earn you a point on an APE's FRQ. I need to be really clear about that. And so we always need to replace the word chemical with a specific chemical. 
So again, carbon monoxide, SOX, NOx, lead, mercury, arsenic, the list goes on and on, and you'll learn these throughout the year. So if you're looking at this in unit one and thinking, what, I don't know any of these yet, that's okay, we'll learn these. Uh, but you always have to use a specific pollutant, and you can never just use the word chemical. Um, a lot of times, too, people are tempted to say, you know, this is harmful to plants or animals, or this is like green or eco-friendly, or this will mess up the ecosystem, or it'll make people sick. And if you look at the right-hand side of this column, there's going to be apes specific equivalents to all of these statements. And so we can never use kind of vague uh, eco jargon. We need to use scientific terms. So review this slide uh, for some great replacements for that eco slang that a lot of times students gravitate towards. Also, if you find yourself struggling with apes vocabulary or struggling to replace this common language uh, sort of eco jargon with apes vocab, there's lots of great Quizlet sets that are linked in the description below. Now, this slide is a bit of a look ahead to our tips and kind of strategies video that's coming up in the future. But I wanted to provide this now because this is sort of a pro tip or a tip for students who feel like they're already advanced FRQ writers. Try to always hit the major course themes. So these are some big themes that will always be addressed on FRQs in some way, shape or form. And so if you look at these topics, you're always going to be asked about environmental impacts or economic impacts you're often going to be asked about ecological impacts. And then you'll probably find at some point in any given year's exam that human disturbances and their impacts will come up. And so if you look at all of these major apes themes and concepts here, you're going to want to try to tailor your answers to fit these major course themes in some way, shape or form. So again, this is kind of a pro tip slide here for students that already feel like they have the mechanics of FRQ writing down, but want to think about what are these major ideas that I should be trying to tie my answers to when I'm actually trying to, you know, strategically write an FRQ to earn as many points as possible. All right, now it's time to actually practice writing. And so what you'll notice here is we have the same FRQ that we annotated in last week's video, but this time we're going to try writing it. So I left the annotations on the screen as a reminder that it's very helpful to annotate your FRQs quickly before you write. So I recommend my students actually take eight to 10 minutes to read, break down and fully annotate the FRQ. And if you do that, the writing should actually be very quick. Now, if you find that you can't take eight to 10 minutes to annotate an FRQ and still have enough time to write it, you may need to shorten that. But the suggested time for an identifying two you know, consequences or two impacts type FRQ would be two minutes. And that's about a minute a sentence. So if you've already broken it down and annotating it, uh, annotated it, again, that writing process should actually be very brief. So go ahead and pause the video now and try writing this FRQ. You can do this on paper or you can do this in the Google Doc that's linked in the description below. So what we'll do now is we will quickly look at the scoring guide and a student exemplar to show how we could have earned points on this FRQ. So here's the student exemplar. And what I want to do is highlight exactly where they earned points. So if we look at the rubric, we have a point here for reducing the use of fossil fuels or uh, that are used in heating and cooling. And so if we look at the student exemplar, we're gonna see that they specifically use the phrase reduces the need for cooling and heating. So that would earn them a point. We have another point here, which is that the green roof can create a habitat for wildlife and that's gonna increase biodiversity. And the student is also going to earn this point for using very similar language in their FRQ. So here's a great example of what it would look like to earn two points on this FRQ. And notice that they use two simple sentences, very clear, very concise. So take a minute here to pause the video and try writing this second FRQ practice, and then we will score this one as well. So again, we'll look at the scoring guide and a student exemplar, and we'll look at exactly where they earned their points. So the first points here are going to be earned for citing that they should locally source their food to reduce transportation. So if we look at the student answer, they said they should the school should source the food from within 50 miles to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide released by shipping. The fact that they actually mentioned the reduced carbon dioxide emission is very important. Notice that they said carbon dioxide emission instead of harmful chemicals or polluting the atmosphere. Then they also earned a point for talking about using recycling or recyclable uh, food containers or reusable food containers to reduce waste. And so if we look at the student answer, you know, utilize redu uh, reusable plates and silverware to reduce trash waste. They could have strengthened this answer a little bit by connecting it to landfills, but this was enough to earn the certain uh, two points here. So go ahead now and take a minute to try to write FRQ number three. 
Uh, the suggested timing here would also be about two minutes. Remember, if this feels quick, that's because we've already used up some of our time annotating the FRQ and making sense of it. So in this case here, there's really only one correct answer that we're looking for, and it has a few really important parts. So that's gonna be photosynthesis done by plants to take in carbon dioxide. We have to say carbon dioxide, we can't just say carbon and convert it into glucose. And so we can see in the student exemplar, they're gonna have all of those key parts. And so they're gonna earn an answer here. Notice that I actually chopped their answer off mid sentence. They had more to this, but they didn't need it. And that's exactly how the reader is going to look at the response. Once they've seen all the necessary components, you've earned the point and you're good to go. Then finally, we'll try writing uh, practice FRQ number four here and then score it together in a second. So here we have the scoring guide and I want to highlight an answer that the student in the exemplar is going to use, which is deforestation. Now deforestation can increase atmospheric carbon either by actually reducing the reservoirs meaning reducing the amount of plants that take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere or through the actual release of carbon dioxide from the trees after they're cut down through the process of decomposition. So let's take a look at a student exemplar. So if we look at the exemplar here, what we'll see is that they have deforestation. Uh, they have that that decreases the amount of plants that are available to take carbon dioxide from the air. So they've earned that reduced carbon reservoir point. Then they have a second answer. Uh, the second human activity is industrial plants adding more greenhouse gases to the air. So this looks promising, but we have to remember that the prompt specified other than fossil fuels. So they missed a modifier here. They did not remember uh, that they cannot talk about fossil fuel related answers. And so that resulted in them losing the point. So remember the annotation process is very critical because the student probably could have come up with another example if they had remembered that they couldn't have talked about fossil fuel due to the modifier in their answer. Again, that's why annotation is so critical before writing your FRQ. So before we end the video today, we'll look at just some key reminders or takeaways from the FRQ writing video. So that's going to be number one, be brief, be specific. You do not need flowery transitions. You do not need intros or concluding statements. You do not need a thesis. You just need straightforward, clear answers using apes vocabulary. So remember, if you find yourself using a lot of this kind of eco jargon, uh, make sure to look at the quizlets that are in the link in the description below so that you can elevate your writing by using more apes vocabulary. Then you want to make sure to watch out for modifiers. Even if you know your apes content and your vocabulary, you can still miss easy points when you don't annotate properly and catch answer modifiers. And then finally, there are some major course themes that are going to be covered on FRQs every single year. The scenario of the question may change. The avenue through which they're trying to get at these themes will change, but you're always going to have to address these major course themes on FRQs. And so when you familiarize yourself with the science behind them and the apes vocabulary behind them, you're going to set yourself up to write really quality FRQs. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching today. Again, please subscribe to the channel. If you don't already watch out for those upcoming three videos in the writing like a scholar series. And if you haven't, Make sure to check out the apes video notes to the side here. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.